Hi, this video is on fluid flow and also something called the continuity equation. It's in a chapter on fluid mechanics. I'm following a book uh, by Young and Friedman called University Physics, and this is chapter four in the fourth section in that book. But again, uh, you're going to come across this sort of thing in any uh, comprehensive physics textbook. So let's begin. So this is a fairly short section, but it introduces some basic terms. So for example, uh, what is an ideal fluid? Well, an ideal fluid is one that is incompressible. Uh, that is, its density doesn't change you know, when you put, you know, when you put it in a vise, so to speak. Um, viscosity is another term you may know from uh, changing the oil in your car or transmission fluid, that sort of things, uh, that sort of thing. Viscosity refers to the internal friction of a fluid, its resistance uh, to motion. Um, so um, toothpaste, you know, has a high viscosity. You have to squeeze, you know, to get it to come out. Uh, water has a very low viscosity. Oil and um, transmission fluid have, you know, kind of middle uh, viscosities. Um, a flow line is the path of an individual particle in a moving fluid. A fluid. Ah, it could it could be nice and smooth. It could be turbulent, but a flow line is basically the path that any individual particle uh, in a moving fluid um, uh, takes. You may have heard of streamlining things. Streamlining things has the idea of a smooth kind of flow uh, for a particular flow line. So a streamline is a flow line that's nice and smooth. The tangent uh, to that, that streamline at any point is the same direction as the fluid um, is flowing in. And if you have a collection of streamlines, we call that a flow tube. Now, it might not actually be in a tube. It might be a, a particular you know, kind of current running through a river that's flowing all together and, you know, like, like fish that are swimming in, in rhythm. Um, so a flow tube you might think of as a, a collection of, of streamlines. Laminar flow is where you have this kind of smooth flow, but it, we often think of it in terms of going around things. So you can have a laminar flow around the wing of an airplane, you know, for example, where maybe it, maybe it dips some, but it's nice and laminar. Uh, the opposite of that is turbulent flow. That's where it's irregular and chaotic, and it's not you know, parallel to each other. Maybe some of the lines run into each other. Uh, there's a diagram in Young and Friedman of some smoke that starts off laminar, and then as it, you know, it then kind of twists around. Okay, so um, another thing in this section uh, is the, the second part of this section is the continuity equation. And so let's say you had a tube uh, that is wider at one end and, and shorter at the, the other, but let's say we have an incompressible fluid and that we have a laminar flow where everything's kind of flowing parallel. Well, the continuity equation basically says that the area at one end times the velocity at that point is going to equal the area at the other end times the velocity at that flow. So that's the continuity equation. A1 V1 equals A2 V2. The area times the velocity at this point is going to equal the area times the velocity at this point. And that's the continuity uh, equation. Um, also introduced is this idea of volume flow rate, which I have on the next slide. Basically, the instantaneous, if you want to know the instantaneous uh, rate of change of volume at any one time, it's going to equal the area times the volume at that point. So if you wanted to know what the instantaneous rate of change of volume in relation to time was right here in the middle, then you take the area right there in the middle and multiply it by the velocity right there in the middle, and that would give you the what's called the volume flow rate or the instantaneous rate of change of volume in relation to time. Okay, just a little bit more and this section is done. So there's the volume flow rate again. The instant change of, of uh, in instantaneous rate of change of volume per time is just the area times the volume. There's also something introduced in this section called the mass flow rate that is basically the amount of mass uh, that's passing a particular point at a particular time. And it turns out to be uh, the density, that's not a P, that's a rho, a Greek letter R, uh, the density times the instantaneous rate of change of velocity, I mean of volume per time, dV dt. So if you take the density and you multiply it by the volume flow rate, uh, that gives you what's called the mass flow rate. Density is mass per volume, right? So you have volume on the bottom and a volume on the top, and so you're left with basically mass per time. So density times the volume flow rate gives you the mass flow rate. Finally, 
if the fluid is not incompressible, if its density changes from one point to the next, we have a formula for that too. It's basically the continuity equation with the density added to it. So instead of it just being A1V1 equals A2V2, it's now rho one a one v one equals rho two a two v two, where rho again is the density, the mass per volume, times the area of that point, uh, times the velocity at that point. And there you have it. Short section on fluid flow uh, in physics.